This morning, as we do uh, many mornings, we look at uh, some Baptist history, as Pastor Vogan said. And this morning, when I look at um, a man, uh, Richard Clearwaters, and tell you his story this morning. Richard Clearwaters was born in June of 1900. Uh, he was the fourth child of Guy and Hannah Clearwaters. Uh, they would have eight children all together. His parents were Christians and served the Lord faithfully in their local church. The, uh, the, the father, um, uh, as I read, was very diligent about having family devotions every morning. It was very clear to him that he should read the, read the scripture to his, his family um, every day. When he was only five, the Lord convicted his heart of his sin, uh, Richard, and, but he would not get saved. Uh, he rejected the, the conviction and actually wouldn't be saved for another 15 or 16 years. Clearwaters claimed that he was the poorest student of his mother's eight children, and he detested school and uh, barely passed grade school. In fact, he only finished one year of, of, um, of high school. And the Lord, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Satan, uh, had gotten hold of his heart even as a young teenager. And uh, when he was only 15, he ran away. They lived in Washington State, and he took a train up into Canada. And there he lived for the devil for uh, five or six years. Um, he lived the life of a prodigal. Um, he he uh, slept in flop houses, went from job to job, um, just um, eating up this, this lifestyle. Um, he said, later he said, I really wanted to live for the world. That was my whole desire, to live for the world, the flesh, and the devil. And so for five years, he roamed from job to job across Canada. When he was 20 years old, he was working at a paper mill, and he severely injured his hand and, and arm in an accident. And in the Lord's providence, the nurse who cared for him knew his mother. And she wrote his mother, and she told her uh, what had happened. And Mrs. Clearwaters wrote her son, and she urged him to come home. And she finished that letter with a verse from Proverbs 13, 15. The way of the transgressor is hard. And that just burned in his heart, although he would not be saved for some time. He did go home. He agreed to go home uh, for a little bit uh, as his arm healed. While he was home, the Lord was using other events to, to bring him to himself. And, and uh, he and his brother were on a tractor um, uh, next to each other, and the tractor lurched. His brother fell off and was, was crushed to death under the tractor. And of course, that tragedy again brought deep conviction in his heart. But um, then emotional depression set in, and for over a year and a half, he wrestled with that and the conviction in his heart to be saved. Um, during that time, um, uh, the, the local Methodist church held a, a two-week revival, and uh, no one was saved in the two weeks, and it was a, a bad snow weather and bad snowstorms, but they decided to extend the service another week, and uh, Clearwater's family was attending those revivals, and in that last week, um, he uh, was saved, finally, and, and gloriously saved, and, and God delivered him from his sin, of course, and from his old habits, his, his foul mouth from everything, and um, was saved in that, in that uh, meeting in 1921. Shortly thereafter, uh, he heard his mother singing in the, uh, in the, as she was making breakfast. And he says, in his own words, he says she was singing the 90 and 9. And she had a clear, natural soprano voice. And she came to the last verse and she sang, I will go to the desert to find my sheep. And he says, as if the Lord spoke to him in that verse, he said, will you go? And without hesitation, uh, I said yes. And my call was that simple and that sudden, as clear and as positive as my salvation experience. And in six weeks, um, he had enrolled in Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, um, took the train to Chicago, and after he completed um, his, his time there as his undergraduate at Moody, the man who called himself the dullest of his mother's children, uh, he completed three doctorate degrees at Northern Baptist Seminary, uh, another bachelor's degree at, Kalam at Kalamazoo College, a master's degree at the University of Chicago, and then a, a PhD in New Testament from the University of Chicago. Um, truly the, the dullest of his mother's children, just imagine uh, the, the intellect there um, that, that he had. Um, those who knew him marveled at his brilliance uh, combined with his fervent love for God and knowledge of the, God, uh, the, uh, the Word of God. And um, it's as if someone said that God's saving grace and call to the ministry had awakened the slumbering intellect in him. 
and just kind of an amazing thought. Um, now, his, his academic um, experience at the liberal schools at Kalamazoo College and, and University of Chicago really um, had maybe the opposite effect that they would on some people, but they hardened his convictions that the Bible is God's word and it's authoritative for life and faith. And immediately he began preaching. He pastored a Baptist church in, in uh, Illinois, then in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and then God called him to Calvary Baptist Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, his testimony is quite a, of course, a, a testimony to God's rich mercy and saving grace. But the Richard Clearwater, as we know, uh, his life had just begun. He was 40 years old, and God um, called him to the Fourth Baptist Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And um, there he would pastor for 42 years at Fourth Baptist. And that is the, the, the Clearwaters that, that most of us know, if you know Dr. Clearwaters. Um, that ministry is very notable ministry, um, just a phenomenal um, evangelistic, um, soul-winning church, uh, unparalleled growth. Um, while, they, while he was there, of course, they started a, a Christian school. Um, they built the facilities for that school. They built a 2,400-seat auditorium that they filled. Uh, they purchased land in Wisconsin uh, to establish Clamp, uh, Camp Clearwaters. And then uh, maybe what many folks know him for is uh, he began the Central Baptist Theological Seminary. And um, <clears throat> his ministry there is, is really a, a study in biblical separatism. When he went to Fourth Baptist, it was a member of the Northern Baptist Convention. Um, he quickly pulled <clears throat> the church out of that convention because of its liberalism. Uh, that was a big deal in the 40s and 50s. He took the, took the church into the Conservative Baptist Convention, and later he had to leave the Conservative Baptist Convention as liberalism and neo-evangelicalism uh, seeped in. Um, his, um, his uh, just interesting, his uh, personal soul-winning habits, um, until he was not able to, um, because of his health, he personally made 25 calls a week, uh, knocking on doors, um, leading people to the Lord. Much of that church's growth was his personal soul winning out and knocking on doors. Just really an amazing, amazing soul winner, amazing man of God. Um, in 1956, as I said, he, he began uh, Central Baptist uh, Theological Seminary. In 1957, then, he and a group of men began uh, Pillsbury Baptist Bible College in Owatonna. And um, thousands of young people have been trained for the ministry and the institutions that, that, that he founded, and that influence has reached around the world. I was just talking to um, Evangelist Gilmore uh, last week, and Evangelist Gilmore attended Central Baptist uh, Seminary and, and studied under uh, Dr. Cedar, uh, Dr. Uh, Clearwaters, and so uh, just uh, someone we know studied in that, in that institution. But uh, his personal character, his zeal for souls, um, <clears throat> just... Uh, just mark this man, and, and uh, in his 42-year ministry there, uh, he retired in 1982. Uh, the Lord took him home to heaven um, several years later in 1996, at the age, age of 96. And he said this, he said, May we live in the firm conviction that God has revealed himself to us in his word, for we will never fail when we obey that word. And um, just a, a wonderful story. Here is a prodigal son. The devil had him. The devil had him. And uh, then God got a hold of his heart, and he became a spiritual giant of the 20th century. And that's what God can do. And, and uh, we want to thank the Lord uh, for changing his life, for clear wires, allowing God to change his life. And uh, because of that, God could change the lives of thousands of, of people through his ministry. And thank the Lord this morning for Dr. Richard Clearwaters.